on the street. We're back on the half live today in Beverly Hills from the Case Alternative Investment Summit. The prospect of higher rates for longer means wealth managers are rethinking how to construct winning portfolios in that environment. Michael Nathanson is chairman and CEO of the Colony Group. He's also a Barron's Hall of Fame advisor, having been on their top advisor list 10 times. Welcome. It's good to see you. Great to be here. Thank you for having me. So the conversation we had with Matt Brown a little while ago was sort of the future of what was the 60-40 portfolio. Is, is it dead? Is it evolving? How would you describe it? Um, I, I, would, I would be hesitant to say that it's dead. It's certainly evolving, however. And the way we're thinking about portfolio construction these days is that fixed income is back. As you just said, rates are higher. Fixed income is back. Um, I think it'll be here for some time. Um, we think that it has an important place in portfolios now. Um, if anything, people should be, uh, be locking in uh, the, the great rates we're seeing. We just saw that the 10-year uh, uh, Treasury at 4.7% this morning. And, um, and there is reinvestment risk that people need to take into account and, and, um, and mitigate. Um, but we're also seeing... Um, increasing from a portfolio construction, increasingly um, the need to recognize what's happening in the markets. Um, I heard you speaking earlier today about the Magnificent Seven, how they've dominated the S&P 500. And, and we're very mindful of that, that much of the performance, really all the performance for this year has been in the S&P 500, thinking about ways to diversify around that. In terms of what you were speaking with, Matt, about, I would just also say that um, with the help of Case, we have been able to, uh, to, to substantially build up our exposure to private equity, private debt, private credit. Um, on the, uh, the private equity side, uh, we've now launched our own fund with the help of Case, mm -hmm. about to do that with private credit. And increasingly, what we're realizing is that uh, we don't need only to rely on the public markets for equity exposure. In fact, while we're at an alternative summit, I would just say that the way we're seeing uh, private equity is just a form of equity. It's an equity allocation. Same thing with private credit. And I think that we'll see more of that because there's so much dry powder in the area of private equity. And also because companies they, these days are just not as reliant on capital. They're not as capital intensive largely because of the advent of technology. Well, what, what percentage makes sense for... Look, the, the viewer who watches us every day, we talk about stocks 95% per, percent of the time. You know, people have grown up with 60-40. Um, what percentage makes sense of alts to, to have in your portfolio? And will that percentage only increase as we move forward into what may, in fact, be a lower return environment? Yeah, sure. Um, I'll give you a range. Um, I think that you, you should be looking at anywhere from, say, 10 to 30%. Um, I'll say this as well as, again, it's a question of what is an alt. So the way we think about alts are we think about private equity, private credit. Now, again, I would say that while we call them alts generally, private, private equity is really equity. Private credit is really credit. So it depends how you define, mm -hmm. define these things. And then in terms of alternatives, you have your private strategies, alternative strategies, and then you have real assets. In terms of, of, uh, of alternative strategies, what I would say is in this age of higher rates, there's frankly less need for them because you can, they're generally designed to offer the kinds of, of stability and returns, yield, income that fixed income can. So I think we're seeing oh, less emphasis on that. Yeah. Josh Brown, uh, who's on our program today, has a question for you. Josh? Hey, Michael, isn't there some element of uh, driving in the, in the, you know, looking in the rearview mirror? A lot of the uh, diverse, quote unquote, diversification benefit of private equity versus public equity or private credit versus public bonds really just comes from the fact that you don't have daily volatility. You don't have price quotes. So you have people that go a 90 day period of time thinking that they haven't really experienced the same volatility as we're getting in the public markets. But then they find out later that there was a lot of correlation after all. Could you speak to that for a moment? Josh, what a great question. I really appreciate that question because it also sheds light on the importance of educating clients about what you just described, which is that when you're investing in private equity, it often looks a lot less volatile than it actually is. And, and you're absolutely right that people need to be educated that um, that 
you know, despite the fact that you know you're seeing only infrequent reporting and marking to market, um, it is true that there is substantial volatility, and we do need to be mindful of that. I'm just generally speaking to the fact that uh, private equity is becoming more and more mainstream. Um, organizations like Case make that a lot easier. Indeed, we're finding that um, that um, that you know, there are firms that just want to work with with the the independent advisor, the registered investment advisor, because we increasingly have the the depth of knowledge, the the, the size, the scale, um, and and the ability to bring clients in an efficient manner into these structures. Yeah. I appreciate the time. Thanks for being here. Thank you so much. Thanks for having me. Yeah, you bet. That's Michael Nathanson joining us here in Beverly Hills.